What's up everybody? Welcome back to Headwaters Kayak Channel and I'm here in Boise, Idaho at the beautiful Idaho River Sports. And behind me I have the full line of Feel Free Recreational Kayaks, the Nomad, the Gemini, the Juntos, and the Corona. And I'm just going to do a quick video explaining what each boat is for and uh, kind of give you the rundown so hopefully it answers some of your questions. If you do have any questions after the video, just leave those in the comments below and I'm more than happy to get to them. So I'm out here in Boise, Idaho today at the Idaho River Sports and I just so happened to drop off a huge batch of recreational kayaks and I thought it'd be a good time to just kind of compare and contrast and give you guys a rundown on the feel-free recreational stuff. So I thought we'd start by just talking about what's the same because these kayaks all share a lot of the same DNA. Um, starting from the front to the back, you've got the carry handle. They're all going to have a molded in carry handle so you can pick it up and move it around. Where how are you moving it around, you ask? Well, every feel free kayak comes with a built in wheel on the keel. So this little guy right here, you can pick it up by the front handle and just roll it around. Grab by the handle, and now I can just pick it up and roll it. That's what makes it really popular with rental and outfitters, too, because it's the difference of two employees carrying one boat or one employee just grabbing the front handle and going. Uh, and also for just your average consumer, you know, if you're at a place like, you know, we're at uh, Quinn Pond today. And there's maybe a 50 yard walk to the water instead of having to schlep your kayak or put the cart on you just pick it up and you drag it works really well on concrete not so much on like a sand or dirt a little bit more effort but again you're not wearing out the keel of your boat you're you know using the wheel and these wheels are incredibly stout we have these in our rental fleet we've been using them for almost 10 years now and have had maybe five wheels that we've ever had to replace so pretty good if it can survive a rental fleet it can definitely survive what you're going to put it through the other things you're going to notice throughout all the boats is molded in side handles. They all have center hatch with a little cat bag in there for storage. And it's a Tupperware style hatch. So that means it's a little bit harder to get on and off, but a very, very watertight hatch. Now I'm not telling you to throw your $600 iPhone in the hatch of a kayak. There's still going to be moisture. There's still going to be condensation, but I wouldn't hesitate to put, you know, a towel or a change of clothes, um, a little dry bag with my keys, phone, wallet in there and just easy access to it throughout the day. All the kayaks will have scupper holes throughout. So when people see holes in the kayak, they say, wait a second, isn't water gonna come up in there? But the deal is you have enough buoyancy to keep the water kind of at the middle point of this scupper. So if water comes over the top, it's self draining. Or if you were to flip this kayak over, you just flip it back up and hop on. It's called self bailing. And that's definitely something you wanna look for in a sit on top kayak. Other things is they're all gonna have a tank well, even on the tandems, you have a little tank well there. In the tank well, you'll see these little flat spots. That's a great place to add a rod holder. I think it's like a $15 upgrade. You can get two rod holders put in the back of these. They've got paddle storage on either side, on all of them. You put your paddle alongside there and bungee in a place. Bungee's in the rear tank well. Drain plug. And the last thing is they all have these molded metal inserts. So you're not attaching to a, like a plastic pad eye. You're attaching to a metal rod that's literally molded into the boat that will never fail. And when, if you're loading it uh, upside down on, on the crossbars, a lot of people do that. It's nothing to catch. It's gonna slide on there really easy and uh, just low maintenance. They're all built to be indestructible. There's really not a whole lot that can go wrong with these things. That's why they're popular for rentals, but they're also super popular for just families. They want to buy a kayak that's going to last them forever, that they're going to pass down to their kids, or they can let their buddies go float down a river. Now let's talk about some of the differences here. You notice the Nomad is a heck of a lot smaller than the Juntos. The Gemini, smaller than the Corona. So basically we got little families here. We've got the Nomad Gemini. This is kind of a family, a single version, a double version. They're both a little smaller, which means they're a little sleeker in the water, a little lighter off the water, but they also have a lower capacity. So the Nomad has a 330 pound capacity. The Gemini has a 550 pound capacity. The Juntos has a 400 pound capacity and the Corona tops it off at a 600 pound capacity. And like with any kayak, capacity doesn't always tell the whole story when it comes to stability. We're gonna look at the holes a little bit later and I'll explain the differences. So why would somebody buy a Nomad as opposed to a Juntos? Well, the Nomad is a lot smaller, a lot more nimble. It's only 45 pounds, so it's really easy to throw up in a car, uh, slides in the back of a lot of small SUVs, just a great throw and go little kayak. We actually took these and did a cheap kayak challenge on the Mendocino coast and took them into some pretty big conditions, sea caving and rock gardening out there. And it was an impressive little boat. Even in, for me at 220 pounds, I was able to paddle it around. It was a wet ride, but I had a blast in it. Next up, you have the Gemini, which is sort of all the same things I mentioned about the Nomad, but in a tandem package. 
This one's just over 12 foot long. Everything about the Nomad, just double. Two hatches instead of one. It also has a little center seating position. So if you wanna bring your kid with you, a little spot there. You can also move this seat from the front to the middle. It's kind of a narrow spot for your butt, but it can be paddled as a solo as well. The Gemini's big claim to fame is for a tandem, is very lightweight, and it's got the built-in wheel and the keel, so easy to maneuver around. If you're a parent taking kids out, it's nice to just be able to pick the thing up and roll it. The Juntos is sort of the bigger brother, the Juntos and the Corona. Uh, same idea, concepts behind them, but you'll notice it's a lot wider, a lot more squared off platform. If we look at the holes, see, we can just lift this up and get a better look here. So it's got that tri-hole design, tons of buoyancy out on the edges. Those tracks help it go straight. And it's just a very, very stable tandem, ton of capacity. This one's great for a family boat because you can have a front paddler, a back paddler, and you notice how far apart the seats are compared to the Gemini. That means when you're paddling, you don't necessarily have to paddle and sink. Each person can go their own cadence and you're not clipping paddles the whole time. This one has a much better setup for the center seat option. See how flat that is? So the front seat can be moved to the center, paddle as a solo, or if you wanted to put a kid in there, you can actually put another seat and just have set up like a triple. Uh, not a whole lot of leg room for that center paddler, but works great for families with kids. So you guys, I don't need to get into too many details, but that's kind of the rough and dirty. The Juntos here, the Juntos means together, which means you've got a spot for an adult, but you have another little seat up here where a kid can sit there facing you. We rent these to a lot of people that are bringing their dogs out. Daxi boy, he would love that. Just sit right in the front. And it has enough capacity for a average size adult plus a dog. So me, 220, the dog at 80, we could paddle this thing, no problem. Anyways, you guys, I don't want to overcomplicate it. I just had them all here. I thought it would be fun to kind of do the little quick comparison. I do this all the time for customers and for outfitters. And I figured I'll just put this information out there on the internet for you guys. And if you have any further questions than what I answered, uh, go ahead and leave those for me in the comment section. I'll be happy to get back to you. And until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one. Paddle five. <laughs> yeah! <laughs>